Hey guys, how's it going? So Chad has not been able to make it here yet to work on the area behind the barn and in an effort to prepare for him, we've been just clearing it out and tidying the area up. And we did try to move this pair espalier in the raised bed right back there. And we were not successful. Aaron was greatly disappointed in our tractor. So we are going to try this again. Take two. <laughs> Isn't she a beaut? <laughs> she is a beaut, for sure. We had a little bit of a, a machine upgrade. I think this will work out better. All right, you want me to Yeah, let's go give it a it? shot. picked it up yeah it did <laughs> the, the rebar i was trying to motion to you that you should maybe I lift it up it. yeah I, even, I couldn't see the rebar at all yeah sorry i was like waving my arms at you but anyway i think we're gonna be okay though it doesn't look like it bent any of the metal and the wood looks okay so i think we'll be able just to take it apart like we intended to do anyway yeah let's go take it uh you want to go put it I wanted to just set it in the flower bed near where it's going to go okay. because with this new machine, which we are selling our other tractor because it's just, it's been super helpful, but it doesn't quite do the work that we are doing around here. Like it doesn't lift pallets of stone and it barely lifts pallets of soil. So we have to by hand uh, split up pallets of things, which takes a lot of work and a lot of like, you know, it's backbreaking to lift those kinds of things. Um, so we just found ourselves needing something that was a little bit more, it had a little more oomph. So yeah. this can lift twice as much as the other tractor. I can get, I've got an auger attachment coming. I've got those uh, landscape forks coming, like the pinchers. Uh -huh. So you can move bald and burlap trees and around. Just drop them in the hole without yeah. having to do it by hand. Yeah, I think this is going to work a lot better. This is heavier than the other tractor, so I don't know. I and mean, I've driven it on this grass out here and it's been totally fine. Um, so I think that's just because the tires are so big that it's not it's not creating rust. And it's wet right now. Like it it's is. been really moist. I drove it around out here last night as well. I yeah. don't even see so the marks. So anyway, I'm super super happy with it so far. <laughs> Changing colors, huh? Okay, let's run out to the orchard fence. be able to salvage it. So just as a reminder, you guys, this pear tree, it's an Asian pear. They're so, so good. It's, um, uh, what's it called? Bradford. Shinseki. It's not, Bra it's not a Bradford. My goodness. Could be. No. Anyway, this is the back of it right here. And we will probably have to shave off a little bit of the root system on the back and we'll probably leave this one largely intact, at least big enough or small enough to fit into a 36 inch hole because mm -hmm. we'll use auger when that comes maybe yeah. to plant it tomorrow oh it comes tomorrow yeah. nice so what we'll do and i have not pruned this you can see there's some little branches i need to take care of but we'll put the back of this right here so we'll aug a hole right here in the center of this six foot fence and we'll line it up with the center post here and i think it's going to just do wonderfully out here and it will be all at a height where i don't have to climb into the box 
to prune the top <laughs> or harvest the pears on the top. Okay, so you want, um, do you want this to be butted up against the fence? Um, probably as close as we can get it. I'm okay if it's just a little ways away. What I am most concerned about is making sure that we can put some wire cables back behind. Sure. So we've got something to train these two. The trunk won't matter all that much. So do you think that we'll be able to dig like, cause the auger is going to be, the middle of the auger is going to be, you said you wanted it right here. Yeah. So what I'm thinking. So the auger is going to be like this. It's right. Gonna dig, this is going to be the center. Right. So what I was thinking is we use the auger to dig the hole and then we use maybe some shovels to kind of, um, cut into, cut it, into it on the, the very back side of sure. the hole. And that like way underneath the fence. I don't know if we need to go underneath. I'm not real sure how it's going to go, okay. but I know having your uh, auger and all that will make it a lot easier. Yeah. I'm not sure that this area, I mean, we've been dry, we drive in this area, but it's in the center. We don't drive right here. So it can't be that compacted or anything. No. You would think. No, it will, yeah, the auger will do fine. Okay. So that was job number one for today. Now, Aaron is going to put the bucket on the tractor. What do we call it now? Is it not a tractor? It's a loader, right? A compact wheel loader, technically. Okay. But I'll probably still just call it a tractor. The tractor. It, uh, it articulates, it's like an articulating loader. The reason you would buy this versus a skid steer is that this doesn't tear up the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, um, because it's it's got wheels, so it drives more like a car. Whereas any time that I've rented a skid steer with wheels or tracks, you drive it around in the gravel and like it just tears up the gravel and then you're constantly back there raking the gravel wherever you've been. Mm -hmm. But with this, you just drive it around and it doesn't cause any ground disturbance. Right. I mean, again, I don't think that if the ground is wet, I'm not sure you can drive it in the grass. Mm -hmm. So far, it's been it's been positive. Sure. But, um, but like for reference, there's the size of the, the other tractor. Yeah. And if anybody would like to buy a 4066R John Deere, <laughs> let me know. <laughs> it will be up for sale here shortly. So anyway, he's going to put the bucket on and we've got a bunch of wood chips. They natural tree, they dropped the chips that they uh, created from the trees they just took down back behind our barn and then also other loads. When they're in the area, they come in and dump here and we are going to start marking out some lanes in the dirt lands. So we're going to get like a, we're going to determine the width of our our lane, which I don't think is going to be quite 15 feet, right? You want to go a little smaller? I'm up for whatever. Okay. Um, it's got to be wide enough to handle a truck and a horse trailer. Okay, so maybe 15 is good. I don't know. Plenty yeah, of space probably. For that. Yeah. Probably we'll need 15. Okay, so we're going to determine how wide, where we want the lanes, and then we're going to start putting wood chips down in those areas to help suppress weeds and just to kind of give some definition to that space out yeah. there. Uh, so that is the order of the rest of our day, and we'll just capture it as best as we can for you. Let okay. me go put the bucket on this, and then I'll meet you at the barn. Okay. Okay, so flags, PVC, and paint. Yeah. Okay. I wonder if Paul moved it downstairs with all the rest of the paint. Oh no, it's right there. <laughs> Here it is. Thank you. <laughs> How long do you think that one is? I don't know, let's measure it. Longer than 15 is what I'm guessing. I think that's all we need. We can go get started. Sweet. We are now out in the area where we're gonna start putting in the pathways. So maybe we can show you an overhead of what this whole area looks like first. We have the dirt lands, which is over here. And that's what we were able to buy a couple of years ago. You know, we started planting trees in that on the far side, on the uh, north side of that property last year. And then we were able to buy the piece that I'm standing in this winter. And what we want to do is connect the two of them together. So we have done a kind of a rough sketch of what our idea for this property is. 
We want to dedicate it to a horse pasture and eventual barn. Uh, and we do have all the paddocks kind of written out or sketched out and where the barn's going to go. So the barn will be sort of centered in this whole area toward the back, but there'll be enough space behind it where the lane that we're going to be working on today um, that will kind of connect behind the barn. And we want it to be wide enough and accessible like easily accessible for a truck and a horse trailer because you know if you have horses out here you need to get feed to the barn and all that kind of thing uh, and then in front of it so coming right up to where our fence is going to be we want the paddocks so the large pasture areas and we're going to break it up into four half acre paddocks uh, each one of them will connect to the stall it's like the appropriate stall that goes with it inside the barn and then right in front of the barn you'll see a little um, like rectangular shape that looks like it's been cut in half Aaron couldn't erase that line in, in the middle and we might have it set up that way but it might just be one kind of empty space and that's the dry lot which will also attach to the stalls and it will attach to the paddock so there'll be gates all over the place and then you can see the whole lane around the whole space that's what we're putting in today with the wood chips we want to plant on both sides of it so it feels like this cozy little just beautiful space uh, all the way around but each paddock will have a connection to the lane as well if that makes sense so we won't have it thickly planted all along the paddocks uh, it'll be it'll be planted but then there'll be a little lane that leads up to a fence so that you can access the paddock from each side instead of just from the barn. I hope all of that makes sense. I'm such a visual person that at least seeing a picture is usually fairly <laughs> fairly helpful to me. Right here and I'm going to walk down this fence line. You can see our pots here and this is where our property ended before we actually I think we owned about eight feet over here but Salvador had his sprinklers all set up and it was totally fine to have it the way it was but that means that we are going to be taking out this shorter fence because this is not appropriate for horses and we're going to bounce it back to meet up with the other one i think you can see it easier right here so this will be gone the new fence will just connect right to this one and it will carry on all the way down and that will be the front side of the paddock now when we do that at some point after that we are going to be taking out the mulberry tree um, i am not really ready to do that yet it is full of rot in fact we had in a windstorm it must have been two seasons ago a big big branch came out of it and it was just rotten in the center and natural tree came out and they did a heavy heavy prune job on it and said that they maybe bought us a few years but it really you know knowing that it's full of rot and they said it's just like a matter of time knowing that it doesn't really feel safe to keep it um, so that will come down and we will continue on with the maples and grass so the way this looks right here that's what it will look like going all the way down our lane and this is just kind of like right in the way of that and because it's got the issues you know that will come down but uh, we won't do that until we move the fence because once we do that it'll look like this tree is perched right in the middle of our driveway and that'll be kind of odd. We're gonna leave this. This was the box they put in when they buried the poles that we had removed some years ago. You know, we had uh, power lines running through the property right here and they ran all the way over there. So we had them buried from the backside of this property before we even owned these two. We just thought that while they were out here in the event that we might be able to purchase one or both of these properties at some point, we thought it'd be nice to have it all gone and I'm so glad we did that. It was so much cheaper to have them. There was just one pole in this pasture and both of the owners at the time were like, yes, take it down, that would be great. Um, so it was a lot cheaper to do it back then when they had all of the equipment already out here to take out the others than it would have been to have them come back. Anyway, so I actually don't think that's gonna be in the way of any of our tree planting because our planting of the trees will be kind of in line with where the pots are right now, which works out great. And the beauty of having the four paddocks, so I only plan on having a couple horses I don't uh, I don't know I think there'll be four stalls in the barn uh, I don't think we'll fill them all but we are gonna have the autumn blaze maples which I think is a blend right between a red and a silver maple and red maples are not good for horses so what we plan to do is during leaf drop which they drop them pretty fast we're going to keep the horses in the back paddocks let the maples do their thing and just mow on a daily basis and pick up leaves um, so that we don't have that issue but they should have nice grass out here and um, we will you know be doing hay and stuff too so I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue but we are talking to professionals in that area and getting their input on all of this so that's why we're kind of taking it slow because we want to set everything up properly and set it up in a way that makes it easy and pleasant I don't know so I'm totally happy with just doing it a step at a time Paul and Aaron came out here the other day 
and they marked all the lines. So there's this one right here, that's where the fence is gonna be. And then if you follow it straight out here, there's another one. So this will be the first paddock right here. And they tacked paper plates to the top so that when Aaron took the drone up to take a picture, they were hoping to be able to see where all the lines were or where all the stakes were rather. And then we proceeded to get a ton of rain last night. So this, this plate has fallen off. But anyway, this is where uh, the new paddock will start on this side. So first one here, this one goes over to another stake in a diagonal and then it'll cruise over toward the barn. And I don't think we'll have a new barn out here for a few years, uh, but just getting all the infrastructure set up in the way that we know we're gonna want to use it in the future, I think will be great. Okay, now Aaron ran off. <laughs> we're going to, I'm gonna go find him and then we're gonna start marking this thing out. So I did want to mention, Aaron did till some spots up over here just to kind of try it out and see how it worked. So it looks similar to the wood chips, but what we intend to do is let all the grass die out here and then we're going to put our compost over the top. So we'll have the dark, nice, beautiful compost and then a wood chip walkway, compost with plantings and then our grass pasture. But right here, and I'm thankful for this, the pile that Aaron was picking up from was like wood chips, like true wood chips. And then we got into the squeezins. It must have been where they were just getting to the branches that had all the pine needles and stuff because a lot of the pine needles come out whole. They don't get broken down very much. So the chips kind of turn into these gobs of pine needles, which are a lot harder to spread. Everything will compact down, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it was a little bit harder to get a nice clean line once we got into that stuff. So again, right here, it'll eventually be gravel. That's probably what we'll turn to once we figure out if this is exactly where we want our lane and that's the beauty of using free wood chips it's just the labor of getting it done you know but then we can shift over if we want or you know all of that business but let's walk it we tried to leave it quite thick because you know there is grass under it and while we're not going to be irrigating it I mean we're getting rain today and we're getting more here in a minute so it's still gonna want to try to grow uh, for a while so we'll just keep dumping stuff on it yeah see look at right here when we get into this area it just a lot more clumpy a lot of pine needles in there again it doesn't matter um, but we made it right up to the point where we stopped measuring we just wanted to see if we liked the way it looked over here before we continued on and Aaron Paul and Bethany are over there um, measuring and what we decided to do is um, we painted a line from the stake right here we painted the diagonal and we're just gonna go ahead and measure out the same distance from that line where the eventual fence will be uh, as these are right here. And we've just been hearing some thunder. Look at the sky. It's beautiful. 
Blue sky just beyond it though, it won't last long. So it looks good, except for we're not gonna be able to mirror it on the other side, because we don't have near that space over there. Oh, right. Switch gears? Well, kind of. Okay. Halfway. Sure. You think that's a good idea? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it does make sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, it shouldn't be too hard. We just, now that we know measurements and, and trajectory, we yeah. can go over there and start right in. Okay, cool. Yeah, the other side, just in one spot, uh, there's not as much space to make that big of a curve. So I think we're gonna go over to the other side, start in on that pathway, figure out that curve first, and then we can come back over here and decide if we wanna mirror it, which would look nice. I mean, at least from overhead, it would look nice to have everything match because, you know, the paddocks and all of that's going to be so balanced. Um, anyway, I think that's what we're going to do. It doesn't really matter where we're putting pathway down because it needs it everywhere. All right. So over here on the other side, there's still quite a bit of room. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the first paddock right there where Paul is by the fence and straight line back to this stake right here. You can see the paper plate on the ground. I think we'll have enough space. Barely might have to get rid of the sumax. Next one goes straight back that way, kind of at a, a diagonal. So we've got all this space here, but it would still be nice to know, like maybe if we needed to shift it in just a little bit to make it more, look more proportioned on this side, I don't think it's gonna hurt us too much to do the same thing on the other side. We'll see. So we're just gonna start back in measuring, flagging off the pathway, and Aaron's already got his bucket full of chips. And it's cold. <laughs> this wind feels very, very fresh. going to call it for the day. We were able to get as far on this side as we were on the other side, so I think it's going to mirror each other, at least up to the point where we got it to. And then, you know, this side will be a little bit more of a, not a sharp curve, but it'll be closer to the paddock than it will be on the other side. But it's looking pretty good. It's kind of interesting to see the different kinds of trees that were um, cut down or, you know, different degrees of break, breaking down. Some are a little bit more fresh than others. Some have more of a red tint. There's like a red patch up there but they all kind of bleach out in our sun and, and tamp down and level out over time. Now, Aaron did pop the drone up a few minutes ago and he said it looks uh, pretty bad <laughs> at the moment. He said you can kind of tell what you're trying to do, but we need to do more work on the openings to like, we need to look at this. We've got more rain coming. We need to mirror the driveway opening on the other side. So we need to flare it out much wider and the drone kind of helps you see that. He said it's really hard though, because without the fences for the paddocks out here or more defined edges anywhere, it's really quite hard to see what we're trying to achieve, especially with like the tilled up area over there that looks almost identical. When you're standing back, it's like, is that wood chips or is that a tilled up spot? Hard to tell. So I hope that some of this made sense, seeing the sketch, kind of catching a little bit of the vision for this area. And if it didn't, I hope that along the way, you're able to start seeing it come together as we're able to accomplish more out here. And I don't know the time frame for that. We'll just have to see. I do know Chad is gonna be coming back. He's gonna be working on uh, finishing off the back area and kind of um, sculpting the soil in a few spots and there's going to be some gravel back there and i don't know if we have a chance to really think about the wood chipped areas we might go ahead and have him gravel the lane uh, and that's kind of the beauty like i've mentioned before of these wood chips it's a cheap free way to figure out uh, minus the labor to figure out where you want the lane to actually be and having the new tractor you guys is just such a huge blessing i know paul and aaron and maybe we'll leave you with this footage but i know they got out here and um, they did a few things i know they pulled the rest of that power pole out that was kind of in the middle where when we used to have a fence uh, they cut it off fence level so there was like i don't know four feet of it sticking out of the ground and then i don't know 
how far they bury them, but they were able to, with that tractor, lift it all the way up, which our other tractor would not do. And it was able to carry so many more wood chips than the other tractor. It's just awesome. It's starting to rain now, so I'm going to pack it in, go inside, start dinner. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I can't wait to share with you the rest of this process. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.